Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com. The Samsung Galaxy S3 and the iPhone 4S are two phones that are so popular, I think even my grandma knows about them, and she doesn't even have a phone. In this video, we're going to put them head to head and compare them in every way that matters. Let's get to it. Okay, here they are, two very different phones. The first test we're going to put these through is the boot up test. Which of these devices turns on faster? So we're gonna hold down the power button until the logo appears, and boom, they are off. Galaxy S3 a little bit faster right out the gate. Now most people leave their phone on all the time, but there are still people that turn off their phone each night before they go to bed so they don't hear any reminders or notifications or see any blinking lights. So for those people, the boot up test matters a lot. Because in the morning, you want the phone to turn on as fast as possible so you can access your email and all of your information. So it looks like the Galaxy S3 was first and the lock screen is usable. We can unlock the phone and get right into our home screen. So we're going to turn these off. iPhone 4S was about four or five seconds behind. Let's talk about the hardware on these two devices before we jump into our, our, our other tests. So let's start with the iPhone 4S. The iPhone 4S is definitely starting to feel dated. Uh, it's a two generation old design. And when it came out, it was a really cool concept. A glass on the front, glass on the back, a stainless steel uh, band on the side. It, we had seen nothing like it. But now, a couple years later, we're starting to think that the iPhone 4S design is kind of a liability. In fact, if you drop a typical Android phone or Windows phone on the ground that has a plastic backing like the Galaxy S3, you're going to scratch the back. On the iPhone 4S, you're going to crack the back, do permanent damage, as I've done right here. And then you got to go to the Apple Store, you have to send it off to a third party to get the back replaced. So the new iPhone, the iPhone 5, is most likely to have a back that is not glass. As nice as it is to have glass on the back, it is just too much of a liability. Uh, so this design is starting to look dated. Uh, it's still relevant, it still feels good in the hand, um, but it just, it's starting to look old. And the iPhone 5 uh, coming out in the fall will probably, probably bring something new to the table finally. So the Samsung Galaxy S3 uh, in, in a way looks like a standard candy bar phone, but it's got some really cool design cues. It's got a really thin bezel all around the screen and what you can't really tell from pictures until you have it in your hand is that the white of the phone or pebble blue or whatever color you're getting is outlined by silver. So what you have, and, and maybe you can tell on video, what you have is this huge screen outlined by white, outlined by silver. It just looks beautiful. It looks kind of like art. Then we've got these kind of geeky tech looking uh, proximity sensor and the front facing camera. Reminds us a lot of the Samsung Focus 2 actually. These devices look a lot like if you kind of ignore the screen size. And on the back, we've got really shiny plastic. This is the marble white. No wonder they call it marble. It is so shiny and so slippery. I, I kind of wonder if it's, uh, if it's gonna fall out of my hand even when I'm holding it firmly. So in terms of thickness, the Galaxy S3 is thinner than the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 4S. Uh, hopefully with the new iPhone, we'll see something even thinner because to be honest, the iPhone 4S is starting to feel a little thick in comparison to these new devices that are coming out. So now let's talk about how fast applications open. That's day-to-day -day stuff that really matters. We're gonna go through a variety of tests. So let's unlock both of these devices. We'll slide to unlock, we'll swipe the water or whatever with that nature UX. And so let's double check that all apps are out of memory. And we're gonna just make sure, we're gonna close all of these apps, there aren't many. And over here on the Galaxy S3, no recent apps, no apps in memory. We just booted up, we are good to go. First thing we're gonna launch is the calendar. Very common app that people use. Let's see how fast they open and which opens faster. So over here it's called S Planner, here it's called Calendar. Okay, that was exactly at the same time. Um, with the animation, it looked like for a second that the Galaxy S3 was faster. Let's do it again. It's possible the iPhone 4S was a millisecond faster. My eyes aren't fast enough to detect a millisecond difference. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, they are the same in terms of launching the calendar. Let's try with a third party app. We're gonna jump into Facebook here. Um, certainly these are slightly different apps because you know Facebook for Android, Facebook for iOS are slightly different, but they are loading the same kind of data. So one, two, three, go. Okay, Galaxy S3 was first with the splash screen. Let's see which loads the data first. Definitely the Galaxy S3 loaded the data first. These are over the same Wi-Fi network, so we're not having to deal with network issues. 
All right, so Galaxy S3 won the Facebook test. Let's launch the camera. Extremely important. You want the camera to launch ro rocket fast so you can capture that moment. So we're going to hit the camera buttons here. One, two, three, go. iPhone 4S was definitely faster. Let's just double check because the iPhone 4S launches the app fast, but the viewfinder isn't actually showing anything. Let's actually look closely at that. Okay, the Galaxy S3 actually is the viewfinder faster, uh, but the iPhone 4S launches the app itself. But what really matters is when you're ready to take a picture, and it looks like on the, on the Galaxy S3, you're ready to take a picture slightly sooner than on the iPhone 4S. Now we're going to test out internet browsing speed. Extremely important, of course. You want the device to blast through loading a web page and really get, get, get you there as quickly as possible. So launch the browsers. We're using stock browsers on both. And Pocket Now is actually going to come through um, on these, but that's okay. We're just going to load the, the having a problem with scrolling here. We're going to load the desktop site on both on the home page. Then we're going to move around and determine which sort of has the better performance. So we're trying to get to the home page here. See, on the iPhone 4S, everything's loaded, everything's buffered. I see no white space, which is good. On the Galaxy S3, it's still loading, now it's stopped. Let's do the same test. Flick down really quickly. Everything's loaded. There is no buffering whatsoever. And wow, you, we always say this when we compare the iPhone against any, to any other device. You get to see so much more information on the screen because we don't have this bottom bar here. Um, Android tends to keep things up top. Let's double tap to zoom in. Galaxy S3 has been turned on to reflow the column as it has done there. Pinch to zoom. Very smooth on both. Okay, let's get Engadget loaded here. So we're going to go to the same on both at the same time. We might get one mobile and one uh, desktop. Yep, well, actually, no, both mobile. Galaxy S3 was faster. That was good that we got mobile on both so that we can go down here and hit desktop, hopefully at the exact same time. Not directory. Some AOL advertising there. Slightly off there, the iPhone 4S was a little bit ahead because I hit the button slightly ahead. But let's look as they load. Really uh, quick scrolling here on the Galaxy S3. A little bit less fluid on the iPhone 4S, but that's just how the scrolling algorithm is working. And we are getting some blank spaces. If you saw that before, see right there, it kind of blanked out for a sec. And over here on the Galaxy S3, let's see if we can recreate that and everything's just right in memory right now and and there's no chance of seeing um, any blank spaces on the Galaxy S3 so that is a win with Galaxy S3 let's zoom in up here and tap on this link that was at the same time the Galaxy S3 responded a little bit later so the iPhone 4S is a little bit faster and it won iPhone 4S won in that test scroll down the page Everything's loaded. Scroll down the page. Everything is loaded. So it, it looks like about a tie for the web browsing performance in terms of um, loading everything into memory so that you don't see any white space. The Galaxy S3 is the winner here. But in terms of getting the page up faster, the iPhone 4S is coming out ahead in this test. So both very capable web browsing machines. Now let's talk about dictation. Um, Siri is on the iPhone 4S and S Voice is on the Galaxy S3. Basically the same concept. Let's see which one works better. Okay, so for launching S Voice on the Galaxy S3, you double tap the home button and to launch Siri on the iPhone, you tap and hold. So I'm going to do a tap and hold. What's the weather for today? Here's the weather for today. Shower around, mainly later. Okay, they both understood what I said. Let's do something else. Remind me to call Matt tonight at 8 p.m. Good. Good. All right, they... Okay, they are going crazy, but they both uh, understood what I said. Um, make a new calendar appointment tomorrow at... Whoa. Point is here that you shouldn't use two voice recognition programs at the same time. They both are quite good. Uh, in my day-to-day -day testing, I found actually Siri to be more accurate more of the time, but S Voice doesn't have that issue where the network goes down. On Siri, sometimes it says, sorry, I cannot get a network connection, or sorry, the something is down. Happens actually a lot on Siri. Much more reliable on S Voice, but it's not as accurate uh, as consistently as Siri. 
Now these are two very different displays. We've got a Super AMOLED screen here and an LCD IPS panel on the iPhone 4S. Typical of an LCD is better color saturation, more accurate color saturation, I should say. Typical of an AMOLED is deeper blacks, but sometimes colors that are a little bit artificial. Uh, so we're gonna compare them now. Something also to note is that the screen on the Galaxy S3 is higher resolution, 1280 down, 720 across versus 960 by 640. Uh, the iPhone still has a higher pixel density, uh, but on both, it's very difficult to perceive pixels. I'd say because of the pentile matrix on the Galaxy S3, you have a higher chance of actually being able to see pixels. In fact, let me see if the camera will pick this up. Look at the Google Play icon, and hopefully we get the camera to focus. You can see pixels on the Google Play icon. Uh, and we're going to talk more about this in the final review. When you compare this to like the HTC One X, it's a difference. Uh, you can definitely tell if you have really good eyesight that this is a pentile matrix, and that does impact how things look on the screen, especially text and things that are close up. Let's see how close up we can get before the camera freaks out. That's pretty close, and I think by now you're seeing some pixels here uh, right around where that triangle bends. Anyway, small issue, but we're comparing them, so we might as well talk about these things. So let's click on to this first image here. And right away, you can see uh, that the screen here on the Galaxy S3 is a little bit more cool. The green is more greener, if, if that's a word, probably is. Um, things might look a little bit more natural here, you, you could say, about the iPhone 4S. Let's go to another image here. Um, these all have a lot of green in them because it's a rainforest picture. This one actually has some color. So the colors are a little bit more vibrant, maybe a little too vibrant. Uh, they really pop. You can see the blacks are, are just true black here on the Galaxy S3 um, and over here on the iPhone 4S. You can't really tell because there's no black on the screen, but blacks kind of come out a little bit gray. Uh, so let's look at a picture of, say, John Mayer. I saw a picture of him this morning. If we want to look at some skin tones, actually, maybe he's a... So here we go. And as you can see right away, John Mayer's face and all these pictures look a little bit red. It just, the colors are a little overdone. And over here on the iPhone 4S, they're a little bit more natural. Um, it's tough to tell which is more accurate, but you can tell the difference right here uh, that it's definitely more red over here. And the whites are whiter, the, the blacks are blacker, but it's just, it's a little bit artificial. It's a little bit cool in temperature compared to the iPhone 4S, which is, has become a little bit more warm. When the Retina display first came out on the iPhone 4, it was cool. For the next generation, they made it warmer on purpose to make it a little bit more natural, but it's still not quite there yet. Uh, of course, the, the Galaxy S3 screen is just so much bigger. So, for example, if we go into YouTube, there's just a tremendous difference in the viewing experience. It's so much more pleasing on the Galaxy S3 because it's like having a mini theater in your pocket. So let's go to the YouTube app, and here we go. Skill of the year. Let's find one that might be interesting. Um, we'll just go with the first one we see here. See which renders first. The iPhone 4S might have been slightly ahead. And it's just a night and day difference. On the iPhone 4S, it's puny and small with black bars. Galaxy S3, it's large and in charge. So that's a little test of YouTube. Finally, we're gonna talk about gaming here, and then there's gonna be one more final part after this for video comparison um, in terms of the 1080p recording capability. But let's jump into Grand Theft Auto 3 here. We're gonna go into the downloaded apps. And there it is here. We're going to go over to the games folder. And we're going to launch them at the same time. Slightly different versions of the game, but they have the same underpinnings. So this will be a good test. We're going to leave all the apps that are open in the background because that's just a, a good reflection of day-to-day -day performance. Reflection of day-to-day -day performance. So we're going to launch them. Okay, a little bit faster on the iPhone 4S here. Remember, uh, we're running a quad-core processor on the Galaxy S3, so I'm expecting uh, the Galaxy S3 to smoke the iPhone 4S, or at least, if not smoke, but uh, beat the, the iPhone 4S in terms of gaming performance. Okay, so let's see which brings up the next screen first. iPhone 4S. 
Oh, we've got a crash here on the um, Galaxy S3. That's embarrassing for the Galaxy S3. All right, we'll go back into the game. We'll come to the same screen on both. Maybe we can skip past these introductions. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go to tap to play. And we're going to have to start a game here. Try to press them at the same time. New game. Let's see which loads first. Galaxy S3 first. There we go. Showing maybe it's quad core colors. We've got this intro video that we're going to try to move past. Galaxy S3 is a little bit ahead here. We'll press these buttons here. Okay, and they're off to the actual gameplay. Another little video. Lots of little videos here. So you better drive, brother. All right. So we are going to play on the iPhone 4S first. I've actually been practicing, so I should be pretty good at this game. All right, let's see. I'm looking for any sort of hesitation or sputters. Uh, and I just saw one there. Oh, definitely saw one there, and I think you did too, uh, because you're looking at the same thing I am. Pretty smooth. Um, when you hit cars and crazy action things happen, once in a while you get a skip. And that's not a good experience. I can also tell you that the this game is nicely scaling to the full resolution of this phone. Because when we see the Galaxy S3, you're going to see that it's not really made for, for 1080 or 720p displays. All right, let's see how this guy does. Had the sound down. Okay, got a little sputter there. Let's make a left, sharp left. Okay, probably a little little sputter there. These are small, but again, these sputters really impact the gameplay. So quite smooth, and I gotta tell you, it's much more pleasing playing on a larger screen. Uh, that's that's kind of a no-brainer. So a little bit of sputters here and there. GTA 3 isn't the the smoothest game ever. Even if you take uh, a, another quad-core phone like the HTC One X, it's not amazing. It's not nearly as smooth as it was on the, on, on a console. Let's talk about pricing and availability. Uh, the iPhone 4S is available for $199 bucks on AT&T and Verizon. Uh, that's for the 16 gig model and the price goes up from there for the 32 gigabyte model and the 64 gigabyte model. Um, now the the Galaxy S3 is going to be available on every carrier just like the Galaxy S2, like the Galaxy S1. So you'll have more choice in that area. It'll also be available in 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte configurations depending on which carrier you're going on and it's priced around the same 199 uh, there's actually going to be a red version on AT&T if you like your choice of colors LTE versions on really all carriers except of course T-Mobile they don't have LTE so you're gonna have a lot of choice uh, when the Galaxy S3 comes out in late June on all carriers. Now stick around to the end of this video where we're going to compare 1080p video recording on both of these devices in the end these devices are very, very different. Uh, the iPhone 4S is admittedly turning stale and boring. iOS 6 is coming soon. The iPhone 5 is coming soon. The Galaxy S3 is definitely a better choice if you want a more modern experience, better hardware. Um, software is questionable depending on like whether you like Android or iOS. Certainly both are very capable. Uh, but the, the Galaxy S3 is just leaps and bounds better than the iPhone if you're comparing hardware alone and raw specifications. Uh, but again, this is a weird time to compare the two because there's a new iPhone coming out. We're going to have to see what Apple brings to the table with that. So again, uh, keep, keep your eyes on the video. We're going we're gonna to show you some video comparisons, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. That's it for now. All right, we're testing the 1080p video capture of the Samsung Galaxy S3 and the iPhone 4S at the exact same time. Have some sort of vibrant plants here. We'll move in up close. We'll pan around kind of quickly, see how it does with motion and frame rates. There's a green color, see how that comes out. And then we'll sweep outside to where it's really bright. Move up towards the sky, see how fast the white balance changes. And we'll see how the video quality is. All right, we're testing the 1080p video capture of the Samsung Galaxy S3 and the iPhone 4S at the exact same time. Have some sort of vibrant plants here. We'll move in up close. We'll pan around kind of quickly, see how it does with motion and frame rates. There's a green color, see how that comes out. And then we'll sweep outside to where it's really bright. 
move up towards the sky, see how fast the white balance changes, and we'll see how the video quality is.